news? Well, we have a mysterious package. It came without a forwarding address. And I just I can't quite figure who it's from. There's a lot of clues in here. But, uh, boy, I don't know. If you or anyone in the comments section can maybe parse together who you think sent this to me, uh, yeah, just leave a comment because I'm, boy, I tell you what, I'm stymied. But, you know, uh, just one crisis at a time. I'll figure that out later. You guys in the comments can help me. But what else is in here? Oh, oh, my God. We have the AYN Odin 2. Now, this box, deluxe. What do we have? The Pro 12 gigabyte model with 256 gigs on board. It's clear blue. It's guaranteed to be beautiful. We have this slidey thing. Oops, what a beautiful box. AYN. Oh, interface instructions, system parameters. Look, I don't have to make a graphic. You can just read that. Pause the video and read that. Take her out easy. Don't wanna break it. Comes with a cord. That's it. Cord, instructions, and the main shebang. Oh, oh, oh my. Boy, that's nice. Well, it looks like Mr. Russell Decor puts the screen protector on here for me. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a camera notch. Oh well. Quick impressions here. I'll be d if that's not the wait a minute. Boy, I tell you what, that's that's damn near the same D-pad as the Retroid Pocket 3, and the sticks are extremely similar to the RP2 Plus. So, I don't know, is AYN Retroid? Maybe, we don't know. Stop and play, X, Y, A, B. Clickable sticks, beautiful. Got a button over here, I don't know what that is. A home button, you have your triggers, what's this? Oh, that's a button. I thought that was like a recessed port. That's probably your power button, your volume up and down. Your SD card goes in here. You have a H, was that HDMI out? Yeah. Uh, R1, L1, L2, R2. Ooh. Shoulder buttons are nice. And on the back, we have uh, programmable M1 and M2 buttons. On the bottom, we have our power in and headphone jack. Headphone jack on the bottom, noise. So let's, heck, let's turn her on and see what happens. Oh. Deluxe. Welcome to AYN Odin. Let's get started. Okay. Uh, select my language. I speak English. I will connect to the internet. Wait a minute. Uh, time zone. And we are not in Honolulu. We live not in New York, but in the same time zone as New York. Do I want Google or Odin? Let's let's go for Google for now. You know what? Even this is, is similar to Retroid. All right. Now, uh, the, the Odin 2 ships with nothing. So there is a little bit of a setup process. You can either start loading stuff directly to the onboard storage or slip in an SD card. Now I just happen to have an SD card over here. Wait a minute. So I got this, it's a SanDisk Ultra 512 gigabyte card. Uh, this actually came with Botocera and a bunch of ROMs already on it, like for your x86 stuff, but I'm gonna put it in here. Ah, wait a minute. Boy, they don't want you getting in there, Gary. Okay, don't break it. I still gotta ship this back to Stubbs. Steady. Ah, okay. Boy, they don't want you getting in there. It's almost waterproof. It's it's not waterproof. Don't put this in the water. So just slight hiccup. Uh, I use this phone right here, the the camera right now. Uh, that's that's my phone for two factor authentication. So when I logged into my Play Store account, it turned the camera off. That's not very cash money, but what are you gonna do? Got to download Daiji Show. Well, Play Store is gonna crash. But then we're gonna download Daiji Show and we're gonna get RetroArch and all of our emulators and stuff on here. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it's probably not good cinema and we'll be right back. Oh, I almost forgot to mention uh, these LEDs. Now the LEDs around the thumbsticks, I don't like. I feel like it's just, it's too much. The ambient bars on the side, I actually like. Both of these are gonna be way too bright for in the bed gaming. I'm going to do a fair amount of gameplay footage on here, but I will tell you, outside of a couple token examples, I'm not going to do anything below 32-bit, just because it, it destroys it. It absolutely destroys it. You could play Game Boy or Genesis or Super Nintendo on here with pretty much whatever shader you want at whatever resolution you want, and it's going to eat it for breakfast. No problem at all.
So this thing absolutely dominates 3DS games. I'm playing pretty much everything I can throw at it at at least 2x resolution, and it's taking it like a champ. Come on, Zoo. You're better than this. Everyone's gonna laugh at you, Zoo. Everyone is gonna laugh. Oh, you missed it, you dope. Everyone is gonna laugh at you about your monkey ball performance. What an embarrassment. Oh, did you miss? You idiot. I did it. Perfect, you see that? Slippy, you absolute turd! Where are you? There you go. Ah, oh, crap. I missed. It's games like this that make it very evident that the GameCube was like the N64 too. Going the wrong way, Zoo. Watch where you're going, Terrence. I have PlayStation 2 running at three times native, and I haven't encountered a hiccup yet. Three times native is probably as high as you should go because it's kind of what the screen can support but you can have all sorts of fun. A cool thing is, if you feel like it's a little sluggish, because maybe you got dolphin running in the background, you can just swipe over from the right, and speed up, and it kills everything that's running. If you were right on the cusp, a lot of times that'll give you a boost that'll make sure you're running at a steady 60 FPS. Ohio State sets up in the eye. They go with a toss. He can scoot across midfield, at the fourth, at the 30, to the 20, to the 10. The PlayStation 2 performance on here is so elite that if you map one of these buttons on the back, like I did, to fast forward, it'll consistently run at 200% speed, which shows you how much more power you have on the back end. I like Spider-Man 2. It's the game, it's not, it isn't responsible for breaking my PlayStation 2, but it was the game I was playing when my disk drive died. So is this the Spider-Man 2 game everyone's been going nuts about? I mean, it's pretty good. Who needs my help? Is it you? Piece of crap. Don't you ever talk to me like that? I used to play the crap out of this game at my buddy Bill's house. I think we played the Xbox 360 version. Maybe it was PS2, I forget. But we used to play this all the time. <laughs> oh, I love this game. Combo! See, to me, this is like one of the fun parts of the hobby. I used to get... Shut up. I used to get really jazzed playing old, like, retro, retro games, like Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64, and it gave me memories. 
Now with these kind of handhelds, I can play PlayStation 2 or GameCube games. And now it's like, I used to be able to remember playing games from middle school or high school. Now I can remember games I played during college. It kind of speaks to how far the scene has gone in the last couple years where this is just, oh, obviously I can play 3X resolution PlayStation 2 on this thing for four hours. Why wouldn't I? I present to you the ultimate dad machine. Get out of the way. I mean, this is honestly how I drive to work most days. Put nitrous in my CRV. Shit. Hey, babe. I'm gonna have to drive your car for the rest of the week. Man, I was doing good, too. Oh, well. <laughs> my bad. That's on me. Insurance adjusters hate Zoo for this one simple trick. Nailed it. But yeah, PlayStation 2 performance on here is amazing. 2X, 3X, I, mean, I wouldn't go over 3X, but PlayStation 2 on here is just outstanding. I will say this thing on the side, suspiciously Retroid-like, which is like one of five things on here that's suspiciously retroid like it's almost like they're the same company but i don't want to say that because i don't want to get people yelling at me in the comments you can yell all you want it dries up the algorithm now switch is where we start to meet not necessarily the limits of this device but we start to meet the limits of the software so um, a lot of switch games won't play on here or they'll play a little bit weird and it's not necessarily because the odin 2 can't perform it's that the emulator isn't optimized yet so switch performance on this i think will only get better you can also add specific drivers i added the turnip r7 driver to yuzu here which seems to speed things up a little bit but honestly switch is limited in my opinion Shut up. Switch is limited, in my opinion, just because of the emulators. But the games that it will run, oh my god, it runs them beautifully. This is locked at a solid 30. You take up the entirety of the real estate, and it's just, I mean, there are dips here and there, but this is amazing. The games that Yuzu or Skyline will play, amazing. You know, and every week or two, Yuzu at least, will push out an update that makes it a little bit better. This is something where you never really want to guarantee something because Skyline just disappeared. But this is something where the more you go into 2023, into 2024, I feel like this handheld will become more capable because the software will mature. Everyone's going to see how bad I am at this game. Crap. Uh, this way? Yeah. Uh, where do I go? Crap! Just hide in the water. I don't like this because I can, I can make Nell grunt in a very awkward way. Like she's supposed to be frustrated that I'm not following her instructions. But I don't know. I don't like the idea that she's just moaning awkwardly. I feel like Nell is just rocking out to the music. Well done. Are you ready? Frame rate isn't ideal as you're falling through the entire game world at once, but otherwise, even Tears of the Kingdom runs pretty good on here. Whee! And then Link breaks his neck. 
Tears of the Kingdom is pretty stuttery on here. It's it's a big beefy game and the emulator is not, uh, I guess, fully optimized. I'm just gonna take these eggs. Farm fresh. Ouch. Yoink, crap. Let me get a stick. It's not fair, I need to get another stick. Now I have your stick. What are you gonna do about it? Oops, now you're dead. Rude. Absolutely rude, I didn't even agree to the race. I'm gonna dance for this sheep. Oh, because this is Thriller. Hey, yo, where's your son at? There he is. Well, Gary, I think I've talked long enough. It's time for What Did We Learn? Today, we learned that the Odin 2, it might be the one. This is probably, if not the best bang for the buck. I still think the RP2S, if you kind of ignore shipping, is technically the best bang for your buck because it's only 100 bucks for what you get. But this is, right now, the best Android handheld you could possibly get. We'll see if the Pocket Air can come close. I don't know that it will. It's going to be a question of ergonomics and some Switch performance, but otherwise I feel like they might be neck and neck. But right now, the Odin 2, oh, buddy, it is amazing. This could be the one, unless you're really into Switch stuff, in which case you're probably better off with a powerful x86 handheld right now just because the emulation's not there. Uh, I haven't found any issues with the ergonomics of it. All the buttons are great. You're using basically the sticks from the RP2S, which are very good. They're elevated, so you have a lot more room, right? You're not kind of bouncing off. It's more precise, you have higher accuracy, at least in my feeling, and they're hall sensors too, so you're not gonna run into stick drift, or at least you shouldn't. You got the D-pad, which is great. This is another guy that's virtually identical to what you would see on some of the newer Retroid stuff, which, I mean, they're basically the same company, right? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. They're the same company, right? Right? All your buttons are great. They have good tactile response. You have a home button, you have a back button, which helps in Android. Start and select up here. You have your volume up here. I can't complain about it. One thing I will complain about, and this is so minor, it's stupid. When you have this plugged in at night, it bzzzum, lightsaber time. This green light goes crazy. Your triggers up here are great. You have these guys back here are analog, which is amazing. They have really good feel. They have really good response. You have your two buttons on the back. You can map to things. I always like to use this like for fast forward and emulators that will support it. This handheld is amazing. Um, I would probably give it like a 9.8 out of 10. There are only really two issues I've encountered. And stupidly enough, they are both involving LEDs. So if I turn on these LEDs right now, you can, I mean, even in light, you can see that this is a bit much. These guys around the stick, that's a bit much. And these guys on the side, they're not as obnoxious in the daylight, but at night, oh my God, it's like a beacon. It's like a clarion beacon calling out to the men of Gondor or whatever Lord of the Rings is. And then this, when you plug it in and it charges, this is green and it shoots up like a lightsaber. So the only minor stupid flaw that I'm making up just to make it a flaw would be that the LEDs are a little too bright and you can't adjust them, whether it's charging or these side guys. This isn't unique to the Odin 2, but there are some people, Jaylash, who get mad that this stick is right here and they feel like when you're pressing buttons, you're naturally gonna be pressing this stick. Maybe it's the way I hold it, which when I'm not, when I review it, I kind of hold it like this. When I'm playing it, my thumb is on top of it, but I'm, I'm never really getting false positives, right? My thumb isn't exactly on top of it. It's off to the side, but when I'm pressing these buttons, I haven't noticed any input on this stick. I get where people are like, maybe put a little bit lower so you have a more clear path, but I haven't noticed it. It might just come down to the way you're holding the console, honestly. There are no real flaws outside of the LED lights. This is, this is probably, I don't know. It could be the one. I'm just gonna say, it could be the one. It's in that nice little sweet spot. It's a little bit bigger than the RP3. It's a little bit, well, it's a lot bit smaller than the Steam Deck. It's just in a really good place size-wise. The screen is beautiful. It's a six inch IPS LCD screen. You have vibrant colors, a lot of saturation. I mean, I'm not sensitive to this stuff. You might be able to say, oh, there's an OLED screen that's slightly better. Maybe for super dark blacks on your screen. But I mean, this, 
to me, dynamite. Everything all around. The screen's great. The processor's great. Um, you can get it in 8, 12, or 16 gigabits of RAM. This is the 12 gigabyte model. The only time that's going to come into play is when you're doing really high-end Android gaming or some Switch emulation. So I would probably play it safe. If you're going to get one of these, you can get the 12 gigabyte model. 8, honestly, 8 is probably going to do you fine. 16 to me seems like overkill. This sucker comes with an 8,000 milliamp battery. So this giant battery coupled with the optimization, this thing sips battery. I was playing NCAA football on here, PlayStation 2, 3X resolution for like an hour and a half the other day in bed. And I think I went down 15% battery. I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. This is probably the easiest what did we learn section I've ever done because we learned this is amazing. Um, outside of my conspiracy theory that AYN and Retroid are the same company, I mean, and maybe that's why this is shipping so fast because they're using all the Retroid parts. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, th this is amazing. It's amazing. I would give it, if I'm going to be a little pedantic butthead, I'm going to say 9.8 out of 10. But like, honestly, let's round up. It's 10 out of 10. If you're in the market for an Android handheld that'll play all the way up to Switch, you know, excellent GameCube performance, Wii performance is up there. You have a 3DS, PlayStation 2. It'll run anything you throw at it all the way up to Switch, basically. This is the one. This is a no-brainer. I mean, to me, if you don't already have an x86 machine that is dominating this in performance and you're looking for something, buy it. No brainer, buy it. It's easy. Also, again, if you can figure out who sent this to me, please let me know in the comments.